Hey everybody, welcome back to Whistle Thicket. So it is fall, um, it's almost October, and I just did a small little extra harvest. I got a few frames of honey, some extra honey. Um, so I'm done harvesting for the year. Now I need to feed my bees. Now, if you've done everything you're supposed to, you should have a super of honey left for your bees. I do have that, but it's always good to feed your bees extra. If you can provide them extra food, then that's a good thing for the winter. Now, sugar water, sugar syrup is not their preferred food. They would rather have nectar. I actually have a great fall harvest. That's one of our mini donkeys. Um, I have a great fall bloom, I meant to say. We have a decent amount of goldenrod this year and a lot of asters. Tons of asters everywhere. The bees are really hitting off the asters right now. Um, but this syrup is going to help increase the chance of my bees surviving. They still have to survive from now until really about the end of March. So eventually I'm going to feed them sugar candy, but right now when the temperature is in the 60s, 70s, and 80s still, they will um, feed off of sugar water or bee syrup, sugar syrup. There's a couple um, names for it. So in the fall, we use a two to one ratio of sugar versus water. In the springtime, you use a one to one ratio. Um, I've had success with that. That's supposed to encourage the queen to um, start laying more eggs and also it encourages the worker bees uh, for drone raising and uh, brood raising, sorry. Um, in the fall though, the two to one ratio encourages storage of the food. Now, like I said, the best thing to feed your bees is honey, but, it's, but if you don't have extra honey, it's great to have bee syrup as well, sugar syrup. So the two to one ratio, there's a big debate. Do you do it by volume? Do you do it by weight? Um, I do it by weight. Um, I'm probably gonna do a video that shows the difference. It doesn't really matter, okay? The differences are so similar that it doesn't really matter. The bees do not have the metric system or anything like that where they're figuring stuff out. If it's close to a two to one ratio, it is good. So this is what I have. I have two four pound bags of sugar. And this is pure cane sugar. Um, I never use beet sugar, but apparently beet sugar is not preferred by bees. They like this cane sugar, the cheap stuff. Um, so I have two bags of four pound sugar um, and four pounds of water. And I know it's four pounds because I am going to measure it for you. Now the water is slightly um, over four pounds, but that's also taking into account the pitcher. Um, the next thing you do, it's really so easy. I don't know why there's so much debate on weight versus volume or how to do a two to one mixture. Um, you're just gonna pour in the sugar and stir thoroughly. Sugar. So I went ahead and I poured in my sugar and this is about a gallon pitcher so the eight pounds and the half gallon of water um, makes about a gallon of your bee syrup. Now, some people will boil the water. Um, that's to help the sugar um, mix easier. 
right? If you heat up the water, then it's easier to dissolve the sugar and it becomes a super saturated solution. You can get more sugar to dissolve. But the problem is as soon as it cools down, that sugar is going to precipitate out of the solution anyways. So I don't do that. Um, another reason people do that is to kill any type of bacteria that might be present, any uh, thing that might be in the water to kill yeast so that this sugar water doesn't ferment. But in my opinion, if it's fermenting, then that means your bees don't want the sugar water anyways, the sugar syrup, and it's been sitting out too long. And I only have a few hives, so I'm not worried about the sugar water fermenting or anything like that. Um, I'm going to put this in the fridge minus the amount that I pour in my uh, bee feeders. So how am I going to mix this? I am going to put it into this bigger pot so that I can mix it up a little bit better. Oh yeah. Sugar, sugar, sugar syrup. Time to stir. So some folks will add some essential oils to their sugar syrup. I add a little bit of lemongrass, about 15 drops. This is my wife's essential oil. Don't tell her, she'll get very upset. But I do about 15 drops. One, two, three. That looks about good to me. Um, the essential oil is supposed to encourage healthy practices from your bees. Um, I know there's been research done with essential oils. Um, I know bees love lemongrass, so uh, some lemongrass essential oil can't be all too bad. Um, so then what I do next is I use... Uh, this is a chick feeder, basically. I'm gonna fill up this mason jar, I have two of them, and then I'm gonna put some little pebbles inside the feeder so that the bees can land on the rocks and not drown inside the syrup. So let's go ahead and fill this baby up. Little donkey. Okay, so here is my little feeder. It's a two to one ratio of sugar syrup. And I place a few rocks in here so that the bees don't actually drown in the sugar syrup. Um, these work great for me because I only have a few hives. If you have a lot of beehives, you probably need a bigger system than what I'm using. Um, so you may have to upscale this. This is just a chick feeder now my hives are over there you can um, you can maybe see them from here um, so I'm far enough away that I'm not going to hopefully encourage robbing of my hives if I were to place this right inside my bee yard that could get a frenzy going and bees would start to defend their hives other bees might start robbing their hives this can also attract um, native bees and wasps and hornets and yellow jackets so things you don't want oh and looks like there's a little bee right here there's a bee already flying around and this is kind of late in the day the hives are actually shutting down but um, I still wanted to make this video 
I'm gonna leave this out tonight. The bees may not really work it tonight. It's 630 at night, but in the morning, hopefully they'll find it. I saw a bee here just a second ago. This is a great way to feed your hives in the early fall when temperatures are above 50 degrees. If they're below 50 is when people typically switch to uh, hard candy, bee candy. Um, so I hope this has been um, helpful. Be cool, be safe, and be a beekeeper.